Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode 581. Oh Lord, it's hard to be humble. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, medical director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at Biobalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Today we're going to talk about statins and a side effect of the statins that has just become known to mainstream medicine uh, and has been uh, published in the Journal of the AMA. The information is that statins can make your diabetes worse or it can cause you to become a diabetic from prediabetes In any case, it can make your blood sugar abnormal, which, by the way, then puts you at risk for heart disease. So today I'd like to talk about that, and I called this um, health cast, Oh Lord, It's Hard to Be Humble, because um, my husband and I have this little repartee thing that we do. I'll be reading... um, one of my eight, nine journals, and I'll go, they finally figured it out. They finally figured it out. And he'll go, okay, so what is it? And I'll, and something like this, where I have been practicing telling people that the side effects of statins may be worse than the actual benefit that, a pay, that they may get from the statin. And then it may not be necessary to take a statin if you have not had a heart attack because it might make other things Uh, other problems that you have come to light or to actually get worse. So when I do this thing and I go, oh, they finally figured it out. He goes, what do they figure out? And I tell him, I was telling him about how statins can make blood sugar abnormal. He goes, that's what happened with me. And I said, that's right. And that's why we put you on a different medication to lower um, blood fat called Zetia. It's not a statin, but it does lower blood fat. In any case, our little routine is, when I say that, he starts singing a Mac Davis song called, Oh Lord, It's Hard to Be Humble When You're As Perfect As I Am. And that those are the words. And he starts singing it because he's trying to pull me back from the edge of being overconfident and uh, congratulating myself. But, but I'm not, not really doing this as an ego boost. I'm doing this because I've always been so frustrated that certain things in the research that is already out there and has been out there for years is not picked up by mainstream medicine. And if it is, it takes a decade for it to show up in real practice where they say, yes, you should tell patients this, or yes, you should do this. So many times... I, I mean, it's one of my, it's one of my favorite things to find a treatment for patients who don't have a treatment that's FDA approved. That's one of the reasons and one of the ways I found testosterone treatment and testosterone and pellet form treatment. This treatment actually solved a lot of problems for both men and women in their middle and older ages. And that was new. It was not accepted by Uh, mainstream medicine, and it has slowly come into the light, but still is not uh, accepted as a good treatment for migraines, low libido, uh, no sex drive, uh, no orgasms, uh, ED, uh, loss of muscle mass, aging, um, prevention for Alzheimer's, and and those types of um, diseases of aging. Testosterone even improves a patient's Um, risk or decreases their risk of getting heart disease. So, and one of the ways they do that is testosterone lowers cholesterol. So back to cholesterol. When I saw this article in particular, I was ecstatic because it was in the Journal of the AMA in 2021, and that was in um, November of 2021. And it was called, it was in the journal of AMA Internal Medicine. They have different journals for each specialty. And it was 
labeled association of statin treatment with the initiation um, of diabetes progression. That's, an, that's a very long, complicated way of saying statins cause diabetes to get worse. So that was the, that was the title. And they went through a 13-year retrospective study where they found that people starting statins got, uh, had a, um, a progression or a negative effect on their diabetes. Their diabetes got worse. So after stating this, of course, then they say, well, we don't have enough research, which there's been research on this before this. This is just the research in the most read journal by the most doctors, which is the journal of the AMA. So, so having said that, that all of a sudden a light went on and, and somebody um, in mainstream medicine decided that this was worthy of, of uh, distribution to all their doctors, I've been doing this for a very long time, and my advice has always been to people who are either on a statin or have been told they should be on a statin but aren't, is that statins aren't without risk. Statins can lower your cholesterol so much that you can't uh, make enough um, brain cells, which are made of cholesterol, uh, to repair your brain, therefore you get dementia. So there's something called statin dementia, which is scary in itself. Then uh, we need cholesterol, so lowering your cholesterol to a very low level is not healthy either. And if you talk to internists or, um, or cardiologists, they still say that you can't get your cholesterol too low, which is not true. It can make you feel awful if you don't have enough cholesterol because your body is made of that particular fat and all of your cell walls are made of cholesterol. Your hormones are made of cholesterol. So that is not necessarily true. Another thing that that is in research and has been proven through my treatments with patients. So in any case, my, um, my patients would come in on a statin or being told that they should have a statin. And my workup is this, have you had a heart attack? If you have not had a heart attack, then statin use all the time is probably not wise unless you find out if you have plaque on your arteries. So to do so, there's a $99 test, which is a, a, a CT scan, a two uh, x-ray CT scan, that tells you whether you have plaque on your arteries in your heart. If you don't have any plaque, or if it's lower than, I think they say 50, then you, you probably don't need a statin if you're over the age of 50. Because if, you're, if your cholesterol is actually piling up on the inside of your arteries, you'd have some by then. But if you don't, then a statin isn't really indicated. My cardiologist um, that I had years ago, and I had a deal, uh, he wanted me to go on a statin because I've always had high cholesterol. And I, I said I wasn't going to go on it. And he said, well, let's do a cardiac calcium scan and see if you have plaque. So we did one, and I didn't have any plaque. And so he said, I give up. You're fine. Forget about your cholesterol. So at that time, I was 63. So I was mature enough to have made plaque if I was going to. In any case, it was also proven when I had a cath to have my um, atrial fib treated that I had no plaque. So, so not only did that test tell me I had no plaque, but it was confirmed later, earlier this year, when I had a cath for, for an electrical problem, not a plumbing problem, uh, to get my atrial fib fixed. So... Then I tell my patients, um, if they've not had a heart attack, if they have no plaque, then they really don't need statins, and they should go on, uh, they should actually get retested every three years to see if they're developing any plaque, and they should go about their business and not take a statin. Women are more affected than men in terms of side effects to statins, and statins weren't uh, researched on women, they were researched on men, because before 2014, drugs to pass the FDA approval did not have to be tested on women. So that's one of the reasons we have so many side effects to things like sleep, like Ambien and uh, sleep meds and other things that have been tested on men and they do great, but when they weren't tested on us, they didn't know if they were going to do great with us, they assumed they would, and many of them don't. So, 
if somebody has a fairly high um, cardiac calcium scan uh, number, and it is not in the high risk group, but in the medium risk group, then Zetia is an option for keeping the cholesterol from accumulating on your blood vessels. So uh, that is one of the things that I suggest to my patients, try Zetia instead of a statin. It doesn't have the same side effects. It's not going to lower your cholesterol too much, but it's going to get some of that fat out of your, uh, out of your system through your intestines. So basically you poop it out. So you're going to poop out cholesterol. No big deal. It doesn't give you diarrhea. So um, the side effects of statins are many. So I mentioned one. A lot of times people can't think very well after they're on a statin, and they are unable to remember words. Their cholesterol, or excuse me, their uh, testosterone drops if it hasn't already dropped, or uh, if it, in women they haven't already gone through menopause. But statins can also cause breakdown of your muscle. And that is only for certain people who have a certain genetic type. I happen to have been tested for this and have it. So it causes pain in your muscles when you exercise, so you stop exercising. But it also breaks down muscles so that your muscle goes away. And you, if you've listened to any of my health casts, you know how important muscle is. Muscle is where you burn your calories. It's where you make your heat. It's how you keep your bones strong. It's how you keep moving as you get older. So muscles are extremely important. For you to be breaking down your muscles all the time puts stress on your kidneys and stress on the rest of your body, and it impairs your ability to exercise. So that's a big side effect and one that is, uh, even if you stop the statin, it doesn't get better. It just keeps going. I have one patient that has had that, knowingly had that. Many of my patients refuse uh, statins, but I don't think just refusing a statin in itself is a good idea, especially if you've had a heart attack, you've already proven that you need to keep your arteries clean and that would help you. So it decreases inflammation as well. So if you had a heart attack, that's one thing. If you haven't and you're told to go on a statin and your vessels are clear, you don't really need it. If your vessels are not clear, then try an alternate drug that does not give you these side effects. Now, all of this I have learned from research and putting research into uh, action in my practice, talking to other doctors, talking to patients, and this works. It actually does keep people from having a heart attack down the line. Let me back up one, one second so that you understand that there's you can have a heart attack from plumbing problems, which is your arteries are, are uh, lined with fat and calcium, and that causes you not to get enough oxygen to the muscle of the heart. Or you can have a heart attack because your uh, cardiac electrical system is abnormal. Now, that's what I, I have. I don't have plaque, but I've, I had an abnormal um, uh electrical system. So I had atrial fib. So that's very, it's getting more and more common for some reason. And it is one of the common side effects of COVID and also COVID vaccines. So you should be aware of that it, before you take an mRNA vaccine. It is not associated with Johnson & Johnson. So these are things you should know. An electrical abnormality in your heart causes your heart not to beat properly, therefore not to pump well, and that's a whole different thing. It is not treated with uh, statins. It is not treated with lowering lipids. It is treated with beta blockers and that, like metoprolol. And it's also treated with uh, a procedure where you have you have a catheterization of your artery, and you actually go in and they burn out where you're getting your um, extra beats from or your fast beats. So it's they can burn it or freeze it. I chose freezing. Usually that's about 50% effective, and sometimes you have to go in and get a second one, but it does stop that abnormal beating, which makes people feel really sick and eventually makes their heart sick. So it should be treated it, um, if at all possible. So back to Mac Davis and It's Hard to Be Humble. Um, I find that telling just my husband... <laughs> Uh, that I found something that is new and that uh, is new to the medical world but wasn't new to me that I already was using to treat my patients isn't so much ego as it is uh, a response to all of the 
criticism I took years ago when I was doing things that worked for my patients, that were safe, that had very little side effects, and that when other doctors didn't understand it, didn't know it because it wasn't uh, in the guidelines for their specialty, they would then criticize me. This is my response, is being happy when finally all the things that, or one of the things that I have been use, using and using before other, other physicians in the mainstream are using, that's just kind of my way of fighting back personally, internally, not, <laughs> not out there um, in the public. But now I'm telling you and I'm confessing that I do do that, and then my husband brings me back down uh, to earth by singing to me. He's a really funny guy. Anyway, um, <clears throat> I will continue to bring you my new uh, treatments and discoveries that we use at Biobalance Health and that we um, have really good responses from and we see patients get better. We do not generally use statins. We usually will only recommend that to people who have um, <clears throat> who have heart disease or have, have proven heart disease or having have had a uh, heart attack. So please stick around, come back next week, and hear about new things that we have for you and the things that we have tried, tested, and that we can recommend for you so that you can stay healthy and not wait 10 years for them to come out in JAMA. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BioBalanceHealth.